Get the tenor sing our brotherhood and doing one another good. Lift your voices, everyone. Every country girl and boy. There's no carol like the country Christmas carol. There's a range of city bells with country bells. Really try. I sure hope he gives me the raise. Flynn? Ha! Huh. He won't. Well, he might, honey. I'm gonna ask him today. He just might. It's Christmas. Well, it just ain't gonna be enough anyway. Now, what if I can win that songwriting contest? Can you imagine $2,000? Well, maybe the doctor could wait on his money. Well, maybe you'll get the raise, Dad. Everybody's nicer at Christmas. <laughs> Not Cyrus Flint, baby. He just seems to get stingier every year. Mom, can I have a piece of cake? Oh, sure, hon. How about you, Dennis? You want some more? I don't mind if I do. Mmm. -hmm. Mm. Good, huh, TJ? Yeah. Oh, 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 we got to save enough for Mama to sell. <laughs> yeah. Well, I could make a few more, I guess, but Lord knows I sure got an awful lot left to do. Gotta get a Christmas turkey, gotta get a Christmas tree, gotta get a ton of tinsel, gotta double check the decorations, better get it all together, better not wait too long, Christmas is just around the corner, Christmas is just around the corner. TJ will like a toolkit, I'll start him with a monkey wrench. Like a new stove, better than a fancy dress. And I would like it better if you spent a little less. Here's Santa Cooper, made with Santa's sleigh. Carry up starting on this. My man's done by Easter Sunday. Have a good time to stand here. Have a good time to sing. Christmas is just around the corner. Christmas is just around the corner. You know, Joan, I never should have told Laura about that article in the newspaper. Not until I talked to my uncle. Good Lord, Roger. A doctor who might cure TJ? How could you not tell her? Well, it doesn't make any difference if they can't afford the operation. I've still got to talk to my uncle. A lot of good that'll do. He won't help him. Well, you never know. I mean, it is Christmas. Honey, you aren't really going to invite him to our party again this year, are you? I sure am. He's still my uncle. Maybe it'll put him in a little better mood. I don't know why you waste your time. He's probably the most obnoxious man in the whole county. Ah, oh, come on, Johnny. People can change. Not Cyrus Flint. Well, oh, you never know. Uh. Oh, Roger. What? I just had a terrible thought. What? What if he should come? <laughs> don't worry, honey. We're going to have a great time no matter what. Gonna have a Christmas party. We're going to have a bang of time. Gonna have lots of people. We're even gonna invite Uncle Cyrus. Gotta borrow Jenny's punch bowl. And I gotta get a jug of rum. Christmas, Christmas is just around the corner. Christmas is just around the corner. Gotta buy a silver platter. Gotta get the curtains clean. Gotta get a fancy waiter. Maybe even rent an English butler. Gotta buy a crystal angel. Gotta buy a friend for gift. Christmas is 
just around the corner. Christmas is just around the corner. Some would play the piano and the guitar too. I'm gonna need a bank loan long before you're through. You're gonna like the party. It's gonna be a big success. I'd like it a whole lot better if you spent a little less. Maybe with Sam's helper. Maybe with Santa's sleigh. Could have got it start in August. Might have got it done by Easter Sunday. Hadn't got time to sing. Here, hadn't got time to sing. Christmas is just around the corner. Christmas is just around the corner. Flint City Bank Commercials, take one. Action. Say, you feel like you got a whole six-pack of troubles lately? Your bills got you as nervous as a long-tailed cat in a room full of rocking chairs? Well, no need to worry, neighbor. We've got the answer for you in two words. Cyrus Flint. Hi there, folks. It's me again. How you doing? You know, it's getting close to Christmas. And you know what that means. Money. That's right, folks. It's gonna cost you a lot of money. But say, have you considered this? Wouldn't it be better this year to think about the meaning of Christmas? You know, it didn't used to mean a lot of fancy clothes and expensive presents. After all, it's the thought. Who can wave away a gloomy day with the magic maker's hand? Who's the juggler and a one-man band? Who can make the laughter start? The happy man with the million-dollar smile, the million-dollar smile and the sunshine in his heart. So why not have a homespun Christmas this year? Bake a cake, write a poem, give your wife a kiss, call your mom. Who can fill your stein with rainbow wine when there's nothing in your cup? Who can cheer you up just like a pup riding on a kitty car? The happy man with the million dollar smile, the million dollar smile and the sunshine. That's right. So don't forget to enter the songwriting and singing contest sponsored by the Flint City Bank. First prize is $2,000. Yes, sirree. So come on down to the bank and pick up an entry plan. And do yourself a favor this Christmas, friend. Why not leave that Christmas club money in the bank? Now think about this a minute. You can start next year's Christmas club with this year's Christmas club. Save your money, spend your imagination. And remember, folks, that money gets you almost four big percent in the Flint City Bank. Yes, sir, Rebob, we call it the Flint Fat Four. Ain't that right, Buck? Buck? Where is the dog? Cut, 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 cut. cut. Where's the dog? The dog got sick, Frank. We couldn't get another dog in time. What do you mean you couldn't get another dog? There must be millions of dogs. We couldn't get a collie that looked like Buck, so I thought we'd just lose the shot. Oh, you thought? Well, if you were thinking, why didn't you go to the pound? We did go to the pound. Well, no, now, 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 boy. Hey. Everyone relax. No sense getting yourselves all riled up. There's no harm done. We'll just use last week's dog shot. I mean, everybody makes a little mistake now and then. Thank you, Mr. Flint. Nice of you to understand. Fire him. Just wish a wish or dream a dream. There's nothing he can't do. You want a star. You got a star. Cause he can smile it all through for you. And who can cut a slice of paradise? Serve it on a silver plate. Who can generate? That's great when it seems to fall apart. The happy man with the million dollar smile, the million dollar smile, and the sunshine in his heart. Sounds like.
like Rocky Richards. <laughs> Fresh from his karate lesson. <laughs> Wait till he sees what I split in half. Half a bounty? The way he still? It's the quicker picker-upper. Half a sheet of probe. <laughs> Nice move, Rocky. Here, put some real power in those hands. Half a towel? No, wait. That's half a bounty. Oh, 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 oh,
Come on in. I came to wish you a Merry Christmas, Uncle Cyrus. Well, thank you, nephew. And invite you to our Christmas party. You're giving another Christmas party? Sure. We have one every year. Sit down, nephew. How many times have I told you not to waste your money? All those people coming by for free booze and sandwiches. It's amazing, Jake. My own sister's boy with Flint blood in him, tossing away money on perfect strangers. But they're not strangers. They're my friends. And besides, Christmas is a time to be merry. What right do you have to be merry? You are not rich enough. Ah, uh, the insurance business isn't that bad. And besides, what right have you got to be gloomy? You're rich enough. Gloomy? Who's gloomy? I'm happy. And I'll tell you why. Because my partner, Jacob, he gave me some sound advice that's kept me in good stead all these years. It might pay you to think about this. When the Christmas season is at its height, a wise man's wallet is zipped up tight. Well, I think Christmas is a good time. The very best time of the year. Nah. A time when employees ask for raises and fools get drunk at Christmas parties. But aren't you missing the point? I'll tell you what, nephew. You keep Christmas in your way, and I'll keep it in mine. But you don't keep it. Well, then let me leave it alone if I want to. Christmas. Bah! Humbug. A fat lot of good it ever did anybody anyway. Well, I've always thought Christmas was a holy time. And a good time. A kind, forgiving, charitable time. And even though Christmas has never put a penny in my pocket, I know that Christmas has done me good. And it will do me good. And I say, God bless it. You know something? You have a very sincere sound. I mean, I can understand why people buy insurance from you. I could use a man like you right here at the bank. Now, wait a minute. Have you ever thought about selling third mortgages? No, I can only sell things I really believe in. And by the way, can I sell you on coming to our Christmas party? No, you can't. Okay, okay, Uncle, I'm leaving. But before I go, I want you to consider, now just consider, taking out a medical policy on your employees and their families. Stop right there. Uh, Dennis has a little boy who needs some medical attention. Forget it. I ain't buying any more insurance, period. I'll waive my commission. It won't cost you much money. I mean, there's a doctor in Dallas who can... That really... ain't my responsibility. Go sell it to Dennis. But Dennis can't afford it. Well, neither can I. Accident insurance, fire, acts of God, theft, unemployment benefits, Social Security. I didn't take the whole world to raise. Everybody wants the same thing. Money. Well, not me. Because I got it. And there ain't nobody going to take it away from me. There ain't nothing more important. Because after all, where can you go without a cent? Tell me, where can you live if you haven't got the rent? So I'm a penny pension, nickel nursing, bargain basement, petty kind of person. Call me a miser, call me a crank. But while they're on their way to the poorhouse, I smile, smile all the way to the bank. They call me skin flint. like to be in the insurance business. I think I can get you a job. I don't think I can handle that, Roger. Well, people don't have to talk fast. Yeah, I know, but, but by, by the time I said hello, it would take me two days. <laughs> well, you think about it, and we'll talk about it later, all right? 
Hey, listen, by the way, you're still coming to the Christmas party now, aren't you? Wouldn't, I wouldn't, wouldn't miss it for anything. Now, we might be a little bit late, though, because Laura has entered in the big, in the big, in the big singing and songwriting contest. Yeah, I sure hope she wins. So do I. Two thousand bucks. I, I can, I can hardly, hardly say it, but boy, we could sure use the money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are for him, aren't they? Yeah. Well, why didn't you give him the gifts before you asked him for the raise? That wouldn't be right, Roger. <laughs> Dennis, here's something else. Merry Christmas, pal. Happy New Year. Mr. Pritchett, we're not sure we understand this. Well, I am what I am, and take that, sit. At least I'm not a hypocrite. Some people cheat you on a Monday after they've been praying all Sunday. Full of goodwill and full of good cheer. Yes, they're really full of it at Christmas, but I'm cheap, cheap every day of the year. They call me skin, Clint. Just a miserly skin, Clint. Why? Because I saved it for a rainy day. Just a happy old skin quint. Why? Cause I don't kiss it all away. Last time I made a contribution, it was 1943. And if I recall, it went to skin quint, skin quint. That's right. That's me. Shall we do it together? You start. We'd like to thank everybody out there for buying Polaroid's One Step. That's catchy, Mom. You like it? Oh, I sure hope the judges do. I just know you're going to win. Well, if I don't, I certainly hope Mr. Flint gives your daddy that raise. You think Mr. Flint will like my present? Well, if he doesn't, he can just take a fly and jump in the lake. And I don't even care if that's not nice to say. Wish I could take a fly and jump in the lake. Oh, TJ, it ain't, it ain't even a nice day for it. Just, just take a look outside that window. Norville Watkins can swim the whole lake from one end to the other. Someday I'm going to swim that lake. Swim a lake? Hey, TJ, I bet you just didn't take a real good look at that painting you did for Mr. Flint, now, did you? What do you mean? Well, I mean, I bet Norvell Watkins couldn't do a painting half that good. I bet Norvell Watkins can't do half the things you can do, TJ, if you just put your mind to it. How come I could do that? Because you got something special, baby. You got real imagination. When you got imagination, you can go anywhere in the whole world and do anything you want to do, and you can don't even have to move from your chair. Sitting in your chair, you can travel any place at all. You know that? Anywhere. Even walk along with a channel wall. You know what that is? <laughs> or hop a ship to old Rangoon, to Treasure Island, or the moon. Just close your eyes, and you'll be there. But hurry back, and please take care. Because I miss you so when you're not there, sitting in that chair.
Oh, <laughs> pardon me. Uh, oh, say, uh, perhaps you could help me. I am looking for Jacob Burley or Cyrus Flint. Well, I'm Cyrus Flint. Jake's dead. He died on this very night seven years ago. Oh, that's, um, that's, um, well, I am sure that his generosity still lives on in his surviving partner. <laughs> well, that's true. I'm absolutely as generous as Jake ever was. Oh, good. Good. Now, my, my name is Stanley Gershon. I am collecting for the hundred neediest families. Yes, and I would uh, think maybe you would like to make a contribution. Say, they haven't suspended welfare and unemployment benefits for the holidays, have they? Uh, unemployment? Oh, <laughs> no. No, no, no. They are still in effect. Fine. I'm glad to hear it. Yes, yes. Oh, uh, Mr. Flint, uh, how much can we put you down for? Nothing. Of course, you would like to remain anonymous. I'd like to be left alone. Oh. I pay a whole truckload of taxes for the benefit of the poor all year long. But, Mr. Flint, these families need our help, and they need it now. Well, then you certainly should help them. Oh. You have a nice evening now, here. Yeah? Yes, you. You too. You sure do look like Santa Claus with that sack of laundry on your back. <laughs> You'll have that uh, fluffed and pressed and folded and back by tomorrow, right? But tomorrow's Christmas Day, Mr. Flint. Sarah, you wouldn't want me to go around looking grubby on Christmas Day, would you? Well, no, but I thought I could just... You know, Sarah, there's this housekeeper over on the other side of town keeps calling me. Tells me how she'd give anything in the world to work for me, because well, then she could start working for the finest folks in town. And you know what I tell her? No. Well, I say, I could never let old Sarah go. She may not be as young as she once was, but why, she'd do anything in the world for me. Ain't that right, honey? I'll have it for you tomorrow, Mr. Flint. That's my girl. You know, I don't know what I'd do without you. What? Well, you're like family to me. Who are you? Ask me who I was. All right, then. Who were you? In life, I was your partner, Jacob Burley. And I can see that you don't believe in me. That's right, I don't. You're looking straight at me. Why do you doubt your senses? Because you can't trust them. Any little thing can throw them out of whack. You could be a stomachache. You could be the pig's knuckles and collard greens I had for lunch. 
Maybe you're more gravy than gray. <laughs> You still have a chance to escape my fate. Hear me, my time is nearly gone. I cannot rest, I cannot stay. Weary journeys lie before me, and I cannot make amends. In my lifetime, I was a fool. Reflect, Cyrus Flint, consider. When your life on earth is over, are you sure your life is through? When you're gone, will you be sorry for the good you didn't do? You might just walk along forever, wondering as you go, all the joy you could have given, all the joy you didn't know. Are you here? You will be visited by three spirits. The first will come when the clock strikes one, the second when the clock strikes two, the last as the stroke of three fades away. Pay heed, Cyrus. Pay heed. Soon, check newspapers for a theater near you. America in the 20s, the age of wonderful nonsense. Who 
are you? Why didn't Jacob tell you? I declare, that dude still has his head in the clouds. Why, I'm the ghost of Christmas past. Long past? Nope. Your past. Get your coat. Where are we going? Never mind. Get it. Well, put it on. We ain't got much time to chit-chat. Where are we going? Some place where you'll learn something. Now look here. It's the Pumpkin Hollow School. Is that right? Oh, well, that's me. You can say that again. Get ready. For what? We're going to a party. You don't have to know this place too, do you? Know it? Well, I used to work here. It was my first job. as usual. Come in, come in. Okay, give him a hand there, will you? All right. Time to get some cut down. Come on, hop to it. All right, just a bit. Get out of the way. Move it there, Conway.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm very grateful to you. And all that for so little. So little? Well, that man did a lot for us. So old man Abby spent a few dollars. You think it was the greatest thing to ever come down the pike. It wasn't the money. He could make people happy with just looks and words and feelings. There ain't no way to count all that up. I guess that's why I model myself after him. In the beginning. <laughs> Look at that. See how she's looking at me. Uh-huh. That reminds me. You know, she used to... Why, it's Emmy's living room. Yep. Look, that's all I'm trying to say. Be honest, Cyrus. All that really matters to you is your career. Why are people so contradictory? There ain't nothing the world is harder on than poverty. And there's nothing the world condemns more than a man who's out to get rich. Why are you so afraid of what the world will think of you? You've changed, Cyrus. Not towards you, I haven't. When we became engaged, you were poor. And we thought if we worked hard, that things would get better. And they have. But you're a different man now. But that was three years ago. I was a boy then, a simple-minded country boy. You see? Even you know it. We're not who we were. You don't feel the same way about things. Have I ever said I don't want to be engaged? Not in words, no. But in the way you live your life. Tell me something. Now that you're vice president of Jacob Burley's bank, if you'd just met me, would you try to win me now? Amy... If you were free, you'd choose someone who was higher up in the world than me, wouldn't you, Cyrus? Wouldn't you? Amy, the trouble is, you don't understand. I love you so much more than words could ever say I love you more today than I did yesterday But if my love is not enough Then I want you to know You don't owe me anything You're free to go I hope you find that something searching for I hope it's all you want in life and even more with all my heart I wish you well and though a tear may show you don't owe me anything you're free to go
That's enough. I don't want to say any more. But you must. No. You must. You'll never guess who I saw today. <laughs> As if I didn't know. You always laugh that way. Well, who? Cyrus Flint. That's right. I saw him in the bank this morning. You know they say his partner is close to dying, and he was in there anyway? Nothing stopped Cyrus Flint. Um... Oops. Matt, <clears throat> what are you doing up, honey? Kiss your daddy goodnight. Tree looks great, doesn't it? Mm hmm You know, I really feel sorry for Cyrus. You do? Mm-hmm. Let me put it in his terms. His loss is my gain. You know, Cyrus missed out on a lot of the sweet things in life. And I'm looking at the main one. I love you so much. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. What'd you get me for Christmas? <laughs> Come on. Love me so much. You'll find Christmas? out soon enough. Yeah? They sure look happy, don't they? Yep. But confidentially, just between you and me. Sonny, you're a dummy. I mean a dumb, the dumb, dumb, dumb. A girl like that don't happen every day. She was a sweet, sweet sugar plum. You let a girl like that get away from you. How come? Only one explanation. Sonny, you're a dummy. I mean a stoop, doo doo doo. The girls who look like that are very few. She was a double ice cream scoop. How many girls out there would just melt for you? You name Why have you shown me all this? You'll find out. <laughs> A half of my head.
are you? The ghost of Christmas present. And don't interrupt him, we're cooking. <laughs> I gotta admit, that's kind of lively, but isn't it a little late? Late? Man, you kidding? We're just getting started. You know something? You really ought to touch with the present. You gotta get tuned into what's going on. Come on, with me. You're not doing any resting tonight. <laughs> Honey, don't say that. Every little bit helps. If only the Robinsons hadn't canceled that party of theirs, I could have sold eight more cakes, and that would have been forty dollars. Well, the, there's over a hundred here anyway. A hundred and twenty-three dollars and forty cents. Well, the doctor did tell us we could pay it off in installments. With what? And where are we going to get a thousand dollars for a down payment? Yeah. I've got to win that songwriting contest. I've just got to it. Say, Mom, I can't seem to make this top now, do you? Oh, look at you. Don't, Don't you look, look a sight. It looks great. Here. You look terrific. Here, son, I'll help you with that. Laura, you better go and get yourself dressed, or else, or else the judges aren't going to get to hear the best song. Okay. There. I've finally done it. I made the ends meet for one time. Is Mr. Flint going to be at the contest, Dad? Oh, uh, doubt it, son. I'd like to ask him about the pen I made for him, if he liked it. Oh, I'm, I'm positive that he did. I guess when you're the head of the bank, you got a lot of important stuff on your mind. That's right. Oh, I almost forgot to tell you. Yesterday, Mr. Flint comes up to me, puts his arm around me, he says, pitch it, he said, that a boy of yours is gonna make a fine artist one of these days. Did he really, Dad? He sure did, and Mr. Flint... I'm ready. Here you go. Ooh, wow, look at that, TJ, look at there. Still the prettiest woman east of the Mississippi. <laughs> and nervous as a mail-order bride in her honeymoon naughty. <laughs> what? Um, we'll explain that one to you later, TJ. Come on. Yeah, much, much later. They're nice people, aren't they? Too bad about the little boy. What do you mean? Nothing. Come on, we don't want to miss the contest either. Let's go.
sure is nice of you to take time off and come on down here and help us out. Yeah, it sure is. Yeah, when you consider what Flint pays. <laughs> You know, actually, we're the Flint City Four, marked down from five. <laughs> what happened to number five? Well, we had to sell him. We got to eat, you know. <laughs> when we're not singing, we can we can make up to eight bucks an hour. Moving pianos. <laughs> uh, Listen, fellas, it was really nice talking to you. And next time I need a piano move, I'll make sure I give you a call, okay? Right. Our guitarists, we, we also move guitars. Or flutes. Or piccolos, harmonics. Say goodbye, Harold. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Laura's on next. I don't have to listen. You, you, you won't open your ears to anything. Look, Annabelle Williams is gonna win. It's all set. Well, you mean to tell me this contest is fixed? Well, I wouldn't exactly put it that way. Let's just say she gets the publicity. And we get the money back. It's a fair exchange. Oh, sure. But your bank gets the publicity, too. And the next contestant is our good friend and neighbor, Mrs. Laura Pritchett. Come on out, Laura. And now, folks, for our final contestant for the $2,000 prize money, courtesy, of course, from the Flint City Bank, where you and your money rest easy, is Miss Annabelle Williams. Let's hear a real nice hand for the little lady. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to dedicate this here song to a particular fella, and he knows who he is. the 
we got a winner here. Yes, sirree, we do. The winner of the songwriting contest in $2,000 is... Miss Annabelle Williams! Never should have fixed that contest. Oh, don't feel so bad. The Pritchetts, they'll be okay as long as they have each other and TJ. That may not be for too long, though. What do you mean by that? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. That's future. Ain't my territory. Come on now, we're gonna be late for Roger's party. <laughs> Vegetable or mineral? Animal, that's one. Marion? Are you alive or dead? Um, she doesn't even know if she's alive or dead. <laughs> Get out of here. Um, I'm alive, I guess. Uh, that's two. Harry? Are you domesticated or wild? Oh, I'm savage. I'm absolutely savage. <laughs> Martha? Are you a lion, a tiger, or a bear? Martha, that's three questions in one. No, it isn't. Well, sure, it's it's okay, right. but are you any one of those? Give up, you'll never get it. What do you mean, give up? We got 20 questions. Oh, all right. Um, Ross, would I find this animal in a market? <laughs> if you went to the right kind of market. Uh, does this animal grunt? It grunts and growls all the time. Wait a minute. It's alive, it grunts and growls, and we'd find it in a certain market? Yes. Trying to make a killing. Really? Oh, Joni, I got it. All right, who? I mean what? Well, it's a two-legged animal, right? Right. It's not a horse or a cow or a bull, mm -hmm. but it certainly might be considered an ass at times. Right. <laughs> well, it's Cyrus Flint. Right! Oh, that's very good. Oh, well, Unfair. Unfair. You said it wasn't a tiger. Uh, come on, Joni, it's Christmas. Well, Joni, I'm only teasing. Come yeah. on, Joni. Right. Right. In any case, you know, my uncle's given us some entertainment, even though he's not here. That's about the only thing he's ever given us. <laughs> what did you say, babe? Oh, I said uh, I'd like to propose a toast to him, even if he won't come to our Christmas dinner tomorrow. Here's to Roger's Uncle Cyrus. A Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year to him, wherever he is. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know what he said to me yesterday? He said, Christmas. Bah, humbug, a fat lot of good does anybody. I don't believe it. Shame on him. I still can't get angry with him. I mean, who suffers the most at his hands? He does. He doesn't care about anything except money. So he misses the good friends, good times, the very best things in life, even though he doesn't realize it. Honey, I'll never understand why you don't just give up on him. You know, if I uh, just had one thing I could tell my Uncle Cyrus and everybody else in the world like him, I guess I'd tell him something like this.
Flint, I have to leave you now. Are you the ghost of Christmas is yet to come? Hey, look, there's a piece in the paper about it. When did it happen? Mm, yesterday, I think. Does it say who he left his money to? Mm, no. <laughs> he probably buried it somewhere. Or maybe left it to the old miser's home. <laughs> I bet uh, it'll be a cheap funeral. You going? Only if they serve lunch. <laughs> hey, hey, did you know what Who are they talking about? I thought I told him to fire that fella. Thank you, honey, and have a good day. I'm gonna do that, Annabelle. Well. Hello, handsome. We're still going out to lunch? Why not? Let's have a long one. <laughs> yeah, nothing to worry about now that old frog face is crooked. You know, maybe I shouldn't say this, but he always did make my skin crawl. Okay, well, let's just forget about him. Listen, how about going up to the Smokies with me for the weekend? Sensational. I'll meet you outside in five minutes, okay? Okay, precious. Next. Well, I'm sure gonna fire that fella. I wonder who they were talking about. What gets me is none of those folks seem to give a hoot about old Frogface or whoever it was that died. Isn't there anyone that feels a real emotion other than being glad it wasn't him?
No. No, that mustn't be. I'll help. Spirit, let me, please. Too much to ladies. Guess it's a weakness. Three hundred and fifty dollars. Huh? What? That painting alone is worth more than that. Why, well, he had it hidden in his closet, if I know him. That would look like nothing. Just a bunch of messy watercolors. Well, it's not worth much. What about this ring here? That's a good ring. They was going to bury him in it. My God. They're talking about me. Am I dead? Am I? Yes, I am split. You are dead. No. Yes, yes, dead. No. You are dead. No. Yes. No. still here. It's all here. I'm alive and there is time. Time to change the ending. I don't know what I'm doing or what day it is. All I know is I'm a whole new man. Hey there. Can you tell me what day it is? Are you kidding me? It's Christmas. Christmas Day. I haven't missed it. The spirits did it all in one night. I'm alive. I'm really alive. I've got to go out and wish the world a Merry Christmas. <laughs> Hot dang dilly, it's a dilly of a day. Dilly of a day. Dilly as a day can be. Every living thing's in a merry mood, and that's including me. Hot dang dilly, it's a dilly of a world. Dilly of a world. Dilly as a world can be. Wanna click a stick along a ticket fit, and that makes sense to me. Merry Christmas, Sarah, and I have something fluffed, pressed, and folded for you. A hundred dollars? Do you like hugging every lamppost? Do you like kissing every tree? I feel so D-I-double-L-Y-Y, -Y. I could even kiss me. including me. It's a dilly of a day, dilly of a world, dilly of a life, for hot dang dilly old me. I feel so D-I-double-L-Y-Y -Y. I could even kiss me 
happen sooner or later. He's gone round the bend. <laughs> That's too bad. Yes. Hi there. Oh, oh, Merry oh, Christmas. Nice. Yes, Merry Christmas. Yes. A very, very, merry, yes. merry Christmas. Yes. Are you all right, Mr. Flint? You won't believe how all right I am until I tell you this. Huh? You're not serious. I sure am, and I won't give a penny less. There's a lot of back payments included in it, so I hope you'll do me the favor of taking it. Well, I, I don't know what to say, Mr. Flint. That, that is an awful lot of money. You can pick it up at the bank Monday morning. It'll be there, I promise you. And have a Merry Christmas. Yes, well, that certainly will make it a, a very, very Merry, Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. <laughs> yes, indeed, it will. <laughs> Hey, you know, I think no, I got a no. cocktail. Are you expecting anybody to win? No. Here, I... What? <laughs> really? Uh -huh. <laughs> Uncle Cyrus. Merry Christmas, nephew. <laughs> oh, I was invited, wasn't I? Well, sure, sure. Come in, come in. Tony, look who's here. Uncle Cyrus. Merry Christmas. Hello, Tony. Really? Merry Christmas. <laughs> I hope you don't mind having one more for dinner. Uh, no, 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 there's, there's plenty. Good. Well, just in case, though, brought this along. Come on in, Austin. Hello, everybody. Look at that. Wow. Well, I didn't want you to think I'd just pop in for dinner and help myself. Here, let me have it. Okay. Um, won't you stay, too, Austin? Oh, oh no, ma'am. I've got turkey waiting at home. Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Austin, and Merry Christmas. Thank you, Mr. Flynn. Come on in, Uncle Cyrus. Uh, you know everybody. I do. Merry Christmas, Honey, everyone. Merry Christmas. Christmas. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Well, Dennis, you look happy. Christmas, Mr. Flynn. It sure is. Laura didn't win the contest, did she? Well, she got honorable mention. Those judges don't have very good ears. <laughs> no, they don't, TJ. But I'll tell you something, folks. I have held a little Christmas contest of my own. And I'd like to announce some of the winners. <laughs> TJ, you won the trip to Dallas. Dallas? That's right, to see a certain doctor. Mr. Flint, we don't have the money to... Dennis, this is an all-inclusive, all-expense trip, especially medical. Well, Mr. Flint, I don't understand. What on earth is going on? Well, I think it's a miracle, a plain and simple miracle. And I've only just started, Roger. You know, I, I think that's the first time you've ever called me Roger. <laughs> well, it won't be the last, I can tell you that. <laughs> Dennis, you are a winner, too. And now, the envelope. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? Why don't you open it up and see? What does it say? Uh... How can we ever thank you? Well, you can start by accepting a raise. Well, what are you looking so surprised for, man? I never heard of a vice president of a bank who wasn't making at least twice the salary you're making now. Twice my salary? Vice president. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to be needing a good one because I don't expect to be spending as much time at the bank. No, sir, I've got places to go, people to see, things to do. While there's still time. Won't you sit down, Uncle Cyrus? Sure will. Thank you. Friends, I'd like to propose a toast to the new Cyrus Flint. I don't know what's happened, but whatever it is, God bless it. God bless us, everyone. To Uncle Cyrus. Uncle Cyrus. Flint. If ever there was a Christmas, this will be a Christmas like no other Christmas before. Just as long as we all remember that the 25th of December means more than just sending someone something from a department store. If everyone felt like kissing, if some time could be missing, and the heart is not hang on the door. If we all made a resolution to make a little love contribution, that beloved old institution would 